Hey guys, Greg Benz here. In this video, we're going to take an image from here to here using Blend If Mask in Lumensia. Not only does it give us a great way to bring out more color and detail in the image, it also saves a lot of file space. So let's first begin by working on this guy. We want to bring out more of this color in the sunset. It obviously looks very washed out, not the way it looked in real life. So we can start that by working with an HSL adjustment layer. Now we can open this up and if we bring up the saturation, note that we get a really nice glow to the sky here, but also a lot of blue in the image and that's a problem. So we can reset this and take a look at what happens if we start playing with the reds. Let's bring up the reds quite a bit here and notice they're warming up with a lot of banding. So we'd naturally start to open up these bands, see if we can't get that color to flow elsewhere in the sky and look a little more natural. And you can see that pretty quickly, you either have this choice of banding or having too much blue sky adjustment. Neither is really ideal. And we're a little bit stuck here. We can't quite get where we want to with the HSL adjustment. However, we can get more targeted. And in fact, we not only need to get more targeted on just the colors, we also wanna avoid some of the shadow adjustments that are occurring with this adjustment here. So we wanna hit the brighter areas of the lighter yellow colored part of the sky. So let's get this dialed in relatively reasonably, somewhere around there. We'll open up this adjustment a bit more. Airing on the side of allowing more color to flow into the blue parts of the sky is okay here, because we're now gonna control it with our blend if. So let's close this, and we'll go over to the blend if under section of Lumenzia. And we could just grab some sort of a lights blend if here. However, we don't just want the sky, we also want the areas that are more red in color, so we can do that by clicking on the red swatch and then something like zone E to help target that. Now it's pretty subtle, but you can see we've started bringing out some more color in our sky here. And I wanna work in small increments as we go. So that's perfectly fine. And if you're wondering why the red channel for blend if, well, there's a part two to this video where we'll go much deeper on the theory to explain why the red channel versus just the generic default gray channel. So now that we've warmed up the sky a little bit, Let's go ahead and paint in some more color to it. So we use a solid color adjustment. And with this, we can sample from the existing colors just to pick up the hue. That's what we want to grab here. But now we now want to bring up the brightness and the saturation both, which is going to help punch up the color. The saturation maybe around the midpoint should be good here. Clicking OK. Obviously, that's throwing color throughout the image. And again, we want to limit it more to the areas that are bright and more red in the image. We'll do that with the uh, same red zone E mask here. And now you can see how much that's doing for this guy. So with those two adjustments, we've started to bring out some nice detail in the sky in a natural way. The sky itself though could use more contrast. So we'll click on contrast in Lumensia, sample a bright pixel, say okay. We'll sample one of the dark ones, say okay. And that's gonna punch up our sky quite a bit, adding both color and contrast. And that's why we're working in small increments because as we add the contrast later, it brings out this latent color we've already started to add. So these underlying layers, they do matter quite a bit. They're just not as visible until we add the contrast. And we want to add more texture to this sky. We could push up the opacity to get there, but when you do that, notice that the colors start to push to a level that I think is a little unnatural. Depends on your processing style, but for me personally, I don't want quite that much color. So let's undo that. And instead I'll hit Command J to duplicate this layer. And on the duplicate layer, we're getting more adjustment but we're gonna switch it over to the luminosity blend mode. And this is a trick I use a fair bit where I duplicate a layer. So one's in normal blend mode to add color, the other's in luminosity blend mode to work on the luminosity. There's no single blend mode that gets me where I want. So I'll use both to bring out more of this sky. So we have all the sky adjustment we need here. Let's go ahead and select all of these and throw them into a group. And we can see we've already made a really nice adjustment of the sky, but of course, we haven't just hit the sky. We've also done a lot of other things to the foreground here. And the reason for that is the contrast layers were not masked at all. And we haven't yet taken advantage of our group mask. So we'll do both. Let's go ahead and click on contrast. We also want to blend if, in this case, we don't care about the color, but we do want to push towards brighter parts of the image. So we could click on zone E, but I don't think it's getting enough of the clouds there. So I think a zone D blend if does a nice job of targeting those clouds. So let's use the same thing on this secondary copy. And now we've made this adjustment, which is doing a great job of targeting the brighter parts of the image, but I don't know that we necessarily want it in all these parts here. You can see some of these water adjustments kind of depends what you want, but I might bring this down a bit. So let's click on this gradient here and rather doing a pure black to white gradient. 
hitting G for the gradient. Let's go ahead and change our black to something that's a little bit going to show through here. So I'm not entirely eliminating this, but just minimizing it and clicking and dragging to create a gradient like this. We've got it gray in the bottom towards brighter up top. And now we've got this adjustment, which does bring through some of this that I like, but not so much. And that sky obviously looks really nice at this point. What's missing now is more detail in these foreground buildings. We can bring that out by brightening them. So we'll click to add a new brightness adjustment layer. Let's open this and punch this up to maybe somewhere around 80, I think is a nice amount of brightening. Of course, we just want to adjust the shadow areas so we can click on zone B to get more targeted. And we can see that does a nice job of hitting the shadows there. But of course, it's painting throughout the image. So we need to mask it in more selectively. Let's alt click on mask, gives us a black mask. And now we can paint with white over this to selectively reveal it. So hitting B for our brush and switching, we could just begin to start painting here. But here's the problem. If we just paint, we're also going to be getting the sky areas. See how we're hitting the sky there. So I'm going to undo that. And instead, let's mask out the sky. So hitting W for our quick select tool, drag across. We've got a nice selection of the sky. Of course, quick select always creates some rough edges. So let's soften it up a bit and we need to flip it. Over in the basics panel, we can invert. So we now flip the selection. So it's targeting the foreground. And let's soften the edges with the modify key. And if we just simply contract it a few pixels and then feather it by the same amount, that'll soften the edges. And now I'm going to hide the marching ants with the ants button. So now we can use a larger brush here and we're not going to be painting on the sky because we've masked just the foreground areas. I'm going to go ahead, hitting B for my brush, bring this flow down to something a little more manageable and then paint over these areas that we want to enhance a bit here. And you can see we're bringing out some nice detail in these areas here but without adjusting the sky. So at this point, we've made a tremendous amount of adjustment going from before to after in this image. And we've done all of that through primarily these blend if masks. We've got a hand painted mask and we've got a general gradient. And if you look down here at the file size, we've gone from 163 to 224 file size. So it really has not made the file much bigger. If we had done this with regular traditional luminosity masks, let's just deselect and we'll go ahead and drop down the according mass here. So this would be a zone D. Just going to put these in for the sake of looking at the file size here. Zone D on this one as well. A red zone E over here. Red zone E once again on the bottom layer. And we can see that the file size has increased quite a bit with these layer masks. So that's the advantage of using the blend if, which if we undo these four masks there, you can see we're down to 224. So we almost doubled the file size by using traditional luminosity masks, whereas the blend if gave us the result we needed and it's more dynamic. So if we go and make any changes to the underlying raw, etc., those changes will flow through. So a lot of advantages to using blend if, and you can see the final result here looks really nice. Now to learn more about why we use the red channel with blend if, continue on to part two, we'll explore some of the theory behind color channels with blend if, and be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel as well as gregbenphotography.com newsletter to be notified as new tutorials are released.